And it is Modestus Bukaskis, the comeback king, as he's known these days. And uh, once again, the uh, the Cage Warriors light heavyweight champion. Obviously, you got that done on New Year's Eve. So let me just talk about that, Modestus. I mean, how big of a moment was that for you to to wrap this belt back around your waist? Yeah. Um, first off, I want to say, obviously, thank you for having me on, bro. Um, and uh, yeah, it was... Um... Do you know what? Like again, it's it's sort of like I I knew this was the, the at this point in my career the next step that I needed the next thing that I needed I needed to get that belt and I again I just as I did the first time I visualized it every single day I even had a picture on my phone of it of the belt I had a freaking I had one of my old the old pictures that I had of it sitting in my sitting room and now it's actually sitting there and I like I was. It visualizing the belt on my on my seat so yeah for everything to come come to fruition it felt like natural but at the same time it was like a bit bit freaky i was like bloody hell like yeah this is this is mad you know that's awesome man so listen we haven't talked since your ufc release and i just wanted to ask you i guess about that right i mean i understand business is business and things have to happen the way they do but man you had that leg injury that was just brutal, man. And then, you know, shortly after, you're gone. And I just wonder, like I said, I mean, I know the UFC has to do what they do. But, I mean, I, were, were you bitter? I can't imagine that you weren't a, a little bit angry at the way it played out. Um, look, the way I looked at it, bro, is, you know, as it is, business is business. At the end of the day, I had three losses on the trot. Most guys who have three losses on the trot, you know, especially with their first contract with them, they usually let them go. So... I kind of, I knew that that was a big possibility. Obviously, I was hoping that my fight against Oleg Shechuk would kind of keep me in there because a lot of people thought that I won that fight. It's not like I had three completely horrible losses. And obviously, I took fights against very difficult opponents. You know, no one wanted to fight Jimmy Crute and I took that fight. Um, you know, even Oleg Shechuk, like, look at him now, absolutely killing it in the... Uh, in the middleweight division and obviously now Khalil Roundtree gone on an absolute tear. So, you know, I fought some very tough guys. So to me, I, I was kind of basing it on that, hoping that I would be able to stay in, but look, you know, I get it for, for a lot of people. And I mean, just judging by like, I'm talking just people that I speak to and even just like the regular like fans, they thought my career was over. Like a lot of people t told me <laughs> it's mad. Even when I had one of the fight book, one of the fights book, they said, Oh, he's never coming back. I'm like, did you not see me just post that I'm fighting soon? You know? So, you know, it, it, it could have been a potentially career ending injury and, and that coupled with the losses, you know, I get it. At the end of the day, I knew, that that was a big possibility. So I, I just had to kind of, I had to think positive at the time and think how I could move forward. And that was that. It's awesome that you say that, stay positive. Because I guess that's kind of what I want to ask you about. You know, obviously 14 months between fights, you've got to recover, which I'm sure was not an easy situation. The injury looked awful. Um, but then you got to, then you got to kind of start again, right? I mean, you're up, trying to get up this mountain to get to the USC, you get there and then you're gone. So what was that like? I mean, was motivation difficult? Was it tough to stay positive? I mean, did you get down on yourself? Like, man, I'm not, you know, I'm not in the USC. I got this bum leg. I mean, what was yeah. that process like for you? Yeah, I mean, do you know what? And I ha I didn't really disclose any information at all prior to the Khalil fight. But, you know, I sent my manager uh, an MRI of my knee and it was already pretty bad before I went into that fight. And, you know, it, it's just what fighters do. You know, you have injuries, you think, you know, I can, I can get around it. I can do the physio, you know, and judging by how Khalil was looking in his previous fights, I thought, okay, I've got the, I've got the game plan to build, but he came in and it was all guns blazing from the get go. So, you know, uh, and I just, you know, kind of, I underperformed. What 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 hurt me the most was that I I ge I genuinely underperformed, you know. And when you know what you can do, you know, and you're not able to put it out there, obviously, it's just that 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 was the thing that was like literally just playing on my mind every day. I'm like, I know I'm freaking better than this. What the hell is wrong with me, you know? And then, yeah, like the knee, along with the knee, it was probably the most painful knee injury I've had in my life. Like in terms of just even the surgery. Uh, it was like a five hour operation and apparently my physio actually went to watch the operation to make sure that she could, you know, adjust everything accordingly when I had my program to come back. And she said that was the most intricate surgery she's ever seen. They literally had freaking wires and knives flying around everywhere. You know what I mean? And they had like all sorts of strands and stuff like that going. So obviously when I woke up, the first thing I remember me saying was, 
bloody hell, like get me some painkillers. Like it was, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I remember I was like, I was like almost screaming at my mic, listen, like, and they said, oh, we've already given you painkillers. I'm like, give me some more. <laughs> like, I, I, I freaking need it. Like it was, you know, it, it was, and from that moment I knew, okay, at least the road to recovery is there. But, you know, I ended up, you know, you're sitting in bed, you can barely walk, you're on crutches the whole time. You know, obviously, you're just thinking to the point, okay, when can I get off the crutches? We're just going to try and get to that point. I tried to do some things on YouTube as well, but it was dark, man. Like, you know, I, w- I would drink myself to sleep a load of days. Um, I-, I-, I definitely must have had some form of depression because I just couldn't get happy about anything, especially when, when the UFC cut me. I-, I-, I was crying a load of days, you know, and, and stuff like that. Like, I think when when I had the knee injury, it's kind of like, okay, I know I've had knee injuries before. I, I can come back from this, even though I know it's a long road. But especially when the UFC cut me, I was like, buddy, oh, this is just like the worst of the worst. We went to the top of the mountain, down to the bottom of the, you know, bottom of the cliff, all within the space of like a year. So uh, it was mad. As soon as my dream had come true, it got shattered in my face. So... You know, and I understand that, this, like I said, I understand that this is part of the game. You know, you you, you have to perform. So that would that was tough. Um, but day by day, you know, bit by bit, you know, the physio, um, which my physio Leanne did an amazing job. You know, just work it day by day, and she told me not to rush. You know, because obviously I was just so eager to want to get back in there, but. You know, I just I just took it in my stride, just tried to keep myself. There was a lot of things personally that were going on for me as well. So it was just trying to navigate through those waters. But I'm very thankful for this process because it's it's made me learn a lot of let uh, learn a lot of lessons and, and made me come become a little bit more dark in my in my sort of response to certain things in life. And, and I think that's only going to help me going forward. So, um, yeah, it was a stressful time. It was a crazy time, but I'm glad that I had very close people around me, people that love me. And, uh, you know, we got through it together and, uh, I pretty much healed from the injury about, uh, April ish. No, before, maybe a little bit before that I was training properly, like around, yeah, about March, April time. So, you know, I was kind of looking to get a fight already from that moment. So, um, yeah, but it's good. I got to work on a lot of things. Crazy times, man. All, all I can say that the roller coaster has been freaking mad. <laughs> I imagine, man. Well, respect to you for battling through that. And it seems like you're in good spirits now. So let me ask you. So you you, you actually made the comeback in November. And then you fight again eight weeks later. Did you know, you know, after that November performance, like, hey, I, I, I want to do this again right away? Or how did that all come together? Well, I knew that. If you know Lee Chadwick is is a good fighter, you know he's fought on the PFL, he's fought on Bellator, he's fought some big names, he's knocked out like big names as well. Very dangerous opponent, obviously like quite a bit older, but he's he sort of went on a bit of a winning streak, I believe. So it was a big fight. No one else wanted to take the fight, and he was the only one that stepped up. So, uh, you know. And and that performance in itself, it's like okay, I got the decision, but you know it wasn't my best performance but I needed to get the job done I needed the win and that's what that that's what I did but I knew look Lee Chadwick like top level guy like I'm talking like one of the top guys in the world top guys in the UK so in a, in a cage wars it's like I just beat one of the top guys in the UK like surely now I, I need to fight for the belt and um, obviously they had been hinting at the team Europe v team USA card and then funny enough there was a guy that um that was fighting on the Manchester card a week later and he was fighting an American at light heavyweight and uh, the light heavyweight guy gone on a bit of a winning streak as well. Obviously Chuck, that being Chuck Campbell. And then he, he and I, I swear to God, I was praying at the television. I'm like, please, can you like knock him out or do something so that I can call you out? <laughs> so he, 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 luckily he got the knockout and I went absolutely mad. I was like, yes. And then straight away, it just, you know, I just feel, feel like this is this is how the story was meant to be written. And I'm like, listen, Team USA v Team Europe, the American guy wins. Like, what better, what better fight to put together from this particular situation happening? So, it, it just came about from. Obviously, I asked my manager, um, Jason. Uh, I talked to. I even like made loads of posts. Talked to Cage Warriors, and then you know they they got the job done. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm glad that everything came to fruition. I love it, man. I'll be honest with you. I was I was worried that that injury was going to be a career-ending injury or one that had you out for several years, if not, you know, just one. So it's amazing to see you winning again. So what's the plan now? I mean, you just had two fights in quick succession. 
I mean, are you trying to keep this thing rolling and just keep adding up these victories? Do you need some time off to settle some things? What's what's the plan? So I've, I mean, I've I've already been, to, I've literally just come from training now, rushing rushing home from from the train station. You know, uh, I'm 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 straight back in. My 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 cardio is good. My fitness is good. I just done strength and conditioning today. I, like nothing's really gone down at all. I only took like really. I swear to God, I must have had about three days off where I kind of did nothing and I felt like horrible. I'm like, nah, I need to get myself back in the gym. Obviously, I, you know, I, d I did my little party and for one or two days on the weekend, which I kind of missed out on the actual night of the fight. So for me, I, yeah, I want to keep the ball rolling. You know, any last minute opportunities in like the UFC or, or anything like that, you know, I, I'll, 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 I'm ready. I'm in shape. I'm ready to step in. I'm ready to do whatever. Whether the next situation is going to be me having to defend the belt or whatever i'm ready to stay active you know um it's like you you finish the high of one fight it's like i just want i just want to get it again i've had no injuries if you, like you know this is my career i've only got what potentially how like depending on how one how long i want to fight but you know let's say another eight years or what seven or eight years like that will go by like this you know what i mean you need to make the most of it and especially because i feel like i want to I want to make those highlight rules, you know, and this is like a career where you only have once, once in a lifetime chance to do all this kind of stuff. So you've got to put everything out there. And, um, you know, that last performance um, kind of w was the start of that, you know, and, and I want to be able to do more of that. And I feel like I'm, I'm ready to do more of that. You know, I think another big thing in, in my first UFC run was that I, like I said, it just wasn't, wasn't doing what I needed to do. I don't, for some reason, I don't know if it was like maybe stage fright or whatever. I don't know what exactly it was, but I just could. I was wasn't doing what I know I can do, and I feel like now I've started eradicating those errors, and and I feel like I'm ready to do that. So, bro, I want to stay active. I want to get in there. I, I want to fight the best in the world. You know, um, and yeah, that's that. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah, you fought it. I mean. The list of names that you rattled off earlier, I mean, the people that you fought in your UFC run, it's not exactly like you came in and faced a couple of chumps and didn't make it, you know what I mean? So I think yeah. you're certainly capable of a second shot. I guess I'm just – I'm a little part of you is probably just circling the date, UFC London in March, and just saying, <laughs> let's stay in shape just in case. Mate, you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. I've actually got it written on my board as well. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just – you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just – like, look, if if the opportunity arises, you you know I'll be ready. And and do you know what? Another another crazy thing is, it's like you know, obviously when people look at my name and you know people look at my heritage, you know, being born in Lithuania, like obviously that's 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 my flag and everything. But then they hear me, they hear me talk, and they're like, buddy, oh, this sounds like the geezer from the block. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, yeah, I think it's just. It would be amazing just to fight in front of my hometown, and, and I, I just think it makes sense, you know. Aside from Paul Craig, I don't think there's any other light heavyweights from the UK, I'm pretty sure. Uh, apart, oh, Johnny Walker's been training in the UK. But you know what I mean? Like, you know, why not add another one to the mix? But yeah, man, I'll be training. I'll be staying sharp. I'll be staying ready. So whenever that phone call rings for whatever is going to happen, uh, you know, I'll be ready. I love it. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. But you know what's great? To, it's just great to see you in good spirits. It's great to see you performing well again. And uh, I, big things are going to happen in 2023, whether it's UFC London or something else, man. You keep doing what you're doing right now, and I think you're going to be right back there. So uh, we will definitely be looking and paying attention with us. Just and congratulations on kind of pulling yourself out of that dark spot and getting yourself into a good one. Mate, thank you so much. Honestly, it means a lot. And I, I, like, I really appreciate, obviously, the love and support and stuff like that. And um, yeah, like you know, as you mentioned before, uh, yeah, I, I just think this is for me that the message that I want to put across. And I, I did this little documentary thing. It's just mad because on this documentary, you see me, you see me physically rising out on the board. Modestus Bukowskis defeats Chuck by KO, and then it bloody happens. Do you know what I mean? But this is a testament to never giving up. You know. Um, a lot of like, like you said, a lot of people thought that that was it. Like Modestus is finished; he's, he's never coming back. But you know, I, I wanted to prove it to myself. I knew I wasn't finished. You know, I had the biggest amount of adversity that that I've ever faced in my life. But you know, no matter what situation you're in, no matter how deep the hole is, no matter how dark the places are, you can come out. If I can do it, listen, I'm for me. I just feel like I'm a regular Joe. You know what I mean? Yeah, I might have a bit of persistence and and determination but anyone if i can do it anyone can do it do you know what i mean it's just knowing what you have in front of you 
picking out your goals and and going for it. So uh, yeah, like I say, the the the, the whole. The comeback story ain't ain't finished yet. We've still got more to write, so I'll, I'm I'm ready to continue that. And uh, yeah, like I say, thank you so much for for always giving me amazing interviews and everything. You, you're always an amazing guy, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, brother. You got me fired up, man. You said it all right there. That was incredible, man. <laughs> Congratulations on your on your success, and we look forward to more of it, my man. My man, thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, you have a lovely day.